Welcome to Proven Improbable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Today's show, we're going to be discussing the election, corruption, capital controls, arbitrage, and gold. Joining us today is Giant Bandari. He is the host of the highly acclaimed Capitalism and Morality and an advisor to institutional investors. Before we begin, I'd just like to share a couple things with our audience today, Giant. It is number one, uh, deep pockets, before they deploy capital, they contact you. At Proven and Probable, we have the opportunity to interview some of the most exclusive names in the natural resource space. And usually before and after a conversation uh, that we have, uh, or I should say an interview, I have conversations with our guests. And irrespective of who that guest is, there is one name that seems to always come up. <laughs> and it is Giant Bandari. And they all state the same thing. This is the go-to name. Now, Giant, I know that you travel the world. I mean, literally, you're in about two to three different countries per month. Where are you today? Uh, I am currently in India, Maurice. Um, and thank you very much uh, for having me here today. Oh, we're delighted to have you. Now, you're in India today, and I think you have some shocking news to share with us that is not making the news here in the United States. i like to open up the floor uh, to you right now. Let us know what's going on in India that is shocking. Well, the situation is very chaotic in the country right now. What happened was that the same day that U.S. was having elections, Indian government decided to ban all currency notes above 500 rupees. Now, 500 rupees is about seven and a half dollars, which means that just about 80 to 90 percent of currency notes in circulation has been completely banned from usage in the system. They also shut down the banks and the ATMs, which means that people who had no cash are completely stuck. People who had only the higher denomination notes uh, are completely stuck and as i said most the higher denomination notes are only 500 rupee notes which is about seven dollars so a lot of people's lives have come to a standstill and people with all these higher denomination notes have to somehow convert these bills into what will now be legal ten tender the problem is the banks are not yet providing those legal tenders and I will, uh, after I finish talking with you, I will go to the banking system and I'll see what is actually happening in the banks. I am expecting to, to see riot-like situation at the banks today. Now, the question I think everyone has right now is, why? Why is this occurring? Uh, well, well, firstly, and the most importantly, Narendra Modi, who is the prime minister of the country, he came with exaggerated claims about how he would change the landscape of the country. Now, India is not going to change anytime soon. The problem is that corruption comes from the culture and the society of India. Virtually every Indian is prepared to pay a bribe or take a bribe when given an opportunity. What he wants is to stop other people from taking and giving bribes. But that doesn't really add up. Now, in such a cultural environment, corruption has got to exist. What Narendra Modi has claimed is that he would stop corruption in this country. And he would put this country on a good growth path. The reality is that he can't change the institutions. He can't change the people in the institutions because they are all corrupt institutions manned by corrupt people and in a society that is extraordinarily corrupt. But given his claims, he has to do a theater to show to the world and to show to the public that he's doing something. So instead of actually doing something real, and there are things that he can actually do, he is trying to pick up a fight with Pakistan, he's trying to pick up a fight with China, and now he is doing this huge theater of banning the currency notes, hoping that this would lead to end of corruption. But the reality is that, firstly, 
he has no intentions to end corruption because everything is based on corruption but more importantly corruption is the life of this country and corruption will stay i see corrupt activities happening right in front of me to deal with the banning that he has done of the currency notes now is the timing a coincidence with the us election Ab absolutely he wants to keep india portrayed as the fastest growing economy which actually maurice is uh, a lie a big lie in which international organizations economists and most people have participated in india is not the fastest growing economy in the world but what he's trying to do is that he wants to keep this good flashy name of india positive in the international media so it was a good thing to do this while us elections were happening because people were watching the us which really proved which is such a self uh, di which di shows so much self disrespect because you know that no one really cares about india everyone cares about the us and so you time it to make sure that no one sees this news which is really unfortunate because we have in essence what one seventh of the world population in India and the United States we only have what 300 uh, we only have what 5% of the population 350 million people here uh, quite a distortion what are the citizens doing to offset the capital controls well citizens are you know i have heard talks among people i know who have discussed about how they would convert bagfuls of their cash cash kept in bags not just under the mattress how they would convert it there is a process already in motion that would help them convert all their illegal what is now banned and illegal cash into legitimate currency without any problem without any loss of value so this will all happen corruption will continue uh, the problem is that in the from now until the time that the society is liquid again because they have put a ban on 88% of the currency notes means that there will be huge huge amount of economic problem in the society a lot of people will suffer but what is happening maurice is that the, this is a very very irrational and superstitious society and this is what keeps this country backward people don't really understand that they have suffered so much but just because they have been fooled into thinking that somehow this would remove corruption from the society which pretty much means as i said earlier that they would be able to take and give bribes but somehow other people would be stopped from corrupt activities these people sort of feel satisfied that all is on track despite that they are suffering right now but they will continue to suffer because they are irrational they are hypocritical and what they believe in does not add up now are you sure you talking about india or the united states here i see a lot of correlations I, I, <laughs> okay i am i'm saying everything about india here uh, maurice and i spent as you know maurice i spent several months uh, in north america i have lived uh, i i have been to 70 80 countries i have lived in six or seven countries and i have spent a lot of my time in the west including in the us and in canada and i understand that in terms of the words that i'm using it seems as if there is a lot of correlation between what is hap what happens in the west and what is happening in india but the difference is so so huge maurice that the us and canada looks like complete heaven to me when i come to those countries from india yes i've uh, i watch i uh, follow your work and uh, you were mentioning the banana republic uh, talk about that a little bit more for us as well well you know maurice one thing that is very important uh, to accept is that um, colonial powers left these emerging markets in the 1940s mostly in the 1940s uh and some of them left in the 60s and 70s but most of the 
European powers were gone from these countries in the 1940s. You can no longer blame the West for the problems that these people still have. What has actually happened is that institutions of all these countries and virtually every single country that you can think of has continued to deteriorate after European powers left, which means that this country is currently crumbling. The institutions are crumbling, corruption is increasing, heavy handedness is increasing. Now, it might not look that way to a lot of us because uh, things, um, uh, things have not been so bad for the last two or three decades. But those things did, did not look so bad only because of one thing, and that is because there was economic growth, most of which was underpinned by free technology, free gift of technology that came from the West. So these people are in a mess, and I think, including India, and uh, I see a huge amount of problems developing in this country right now. The institutions don't work, corruption is huge, uh, there is virtually no economic growth, uh, and people haven't really become rational, which is the biggest problem with this society. Now, John, you've covered a lot of uh, material here for us. Before we uh, switch in bring this discussion to the United States. Let's talk about gold. What are the citizens doing in India in reference to gold? Well, uh, right now as I speak, and I'm just about to go to the market, um, gold in India is trading for about, and I'm not exaggerating the word, anything up to $3,000 an ounce. I repeat again. 3,000 American dollar an ounce is the price of gold in the street outside my house. Now, what is happening is that uh, people are stuck with this cash, so they are converting the cash that they have in gold. The gold stocks in the retail market have almost evaporated. It is very hard to find gold today in the market, and there was actually major fight between people in the gold market day before yesterday, soon after the announcement came about the banning, because there were massive crowds trying to convert their cash into gold. So a huge amount of gold is being bought in this country right now. Well, you know, Jayant, we live in a, a, a global market. So what happens in India certainly will have effects around the world. Talk to listeners today what they may experience based off of the repercussions from India? Uh, well, I think this is uh, truly uh, a first sign of uh, um, one of the major emerging markets uh, getting into serious trouble here. Uh, and this is apart from the fact that Pakistan and India are uh, almost at a war right now, a small scale war. Uh, we should all understand that these governments are very unnatural entities, certainly in the emerging markets, because these governments are Western concepts imposed on these, uh, these emerging markets. These are crumbling, but I think the concept of government is unnatural, even in the West, in, in societies that are economically very complex and very mobile now, uh, the result is that these governments can no longer control uh, the situation. And this paper currency means that the whole money system, the spine of the economy, is a, in the hand of one institution. And this can go wrong with any country. It went wrong with Zimbabwe. It, will go, it is going wrong with India right now. And one day, Maurice, it will go wrong in Europe, and one day it will go wrong in the U.S. And so the protection that one should seek, would you agree then, is gold? Well, gold is one of the possibilities, uh, Maurice, and gold is something everyone should own today. Uh, it makes absolutely no sense to hold any paper cash with you under the mattress or anywhere else. But also, you truly have to diversify your wealth. You have to keep your money in different countries. You have to protect yourself because these governments are becoming extremely vicious. Uh, and the, 
the most honest departments of any of these governments is usually the revenue department and honest i have to use in inverted commas because these are vicious robbers who are after anyone who has any savings so spread your money diversify yourself keep some of your money in gold and i think gold is an extremely extremely important to place to keep some of your money because when when the time comes when you need some cash in emergency the only thing that that can help you is one of the only thing that can help you is gold you know in, in reference to diversification let's talk about your niche which is arbitrage explain to listeners what is arbitrage so Maurice, one thing that I have paid a lot of attention in on is uh, arbitrage opportunities in the junior mining industry. So just because I understand I have a capabilities to be better than most of the crowd in terms of analyzing junior mining companies, what I do is that I look for arbitrage opportunities there apart from also investing in junior mining companies. and. Let let me expand on this concept of arbitrage. Let's assume company A is buying company B for one share of company A. So the transaction ratio is one is to one. Now suppose company A is trading at one dollar, and suppose company B is trading at seventy cents. Remember, if I buy company B, I'm basically going to make 43% of my investment provided company A stays where it is. Uh, and if I think company A has value anyway, and if, if I think company B has value anyway, I do two things. I invest my money and I invest in, uh, in arbitrage, which I just said is 43%. Now, Maurice, I have discussed several of these companies with you in the past, and uh, you have yourself experienced that this is a, an amazing thing that happens in the market our rational mind tells us that this is a this should be a perfect market situation in which there should not be any arbitrage but you and i have seen it again and again that it is not unknown to find 30 to 50% arbitrage opportunities quite often in the market Absolutely, and that's exactly why we're delighted to have you here. And before we discuss arbitrage just a little bit further, let's go back. You mentioned junior mining. What is junior mining for someone who's a first-time listener? So a uh, mining industry can basically be divided into two or three subsections. One is the big mining companies who are actually producing commodities by mining. Uh, then you have the mid-tier mining companies who might be producing or who might be on the way to production. And then you have these junior mining companies that have only probably just a package of land, a ground on which they are doing geophysics, geochemistry, or they are drilling. They're trying to see if there is a project, if this is a mining project in, in the future. And those are G, junior mining companies. They, are, they tend to be very speculative. But the normal belief in the economic profession is that with risk comes reward. But the reality of life is that you can minimize your risk and maximize your reward if you pay attention and do your numbers and do your due diligence. Absolutely. You know, Giant, you were talking about returns, and I think you were being a little conservative. If you recall, uh, back in May, a uh, company you had shared with us in our initial interview back in February, it was on my radar, and uh, we experienced over 600% return, and that was Sunridge Gold. And uh, we're going to receive an additional return on that later this month. And then also we had uh, what Paramount Gold Nevada, that was about 80%. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to share with you, this is uh, not investment advice, but we're simply sharing with you the returns and the expertise in Giant Bandari. And Giant, you know, just out of pure generosity, um, he sh conveys to you the companies to put on your radar. Giant, let's talk about some of the companies that are on your radar right now. All right, so thanks, uh, Maurice, for your kind words. Uh, but remember, uh, 
arbitrage opportunities that you talked about are opportunities that happened in the past. For the future, we still have to be, stay very patient and rational and really do due diligence before you, I, or your subscribers invest their money. But let me name some names here, and these are not arbitrage opportunities. Most of them are not, but let me give you some names here. It's starting with Gold Eye Exploration, GGY. It's trading at six cents, and it's merging with a company uh, called Treasury Metals, which is trading at 70 cents. The arbitrage is about 15%, and the merged entity, in my view, has an upside by itself. So Gold Eye Exploration, GGY. Another company that I like is JDL Gold. Uh, the ticker is JDL, and the share price is $1.85. Another company with a lot of cash and a couple of very good projects managed by some very good people as well. Um, I also like um, a company called Helio Resources, which is trading at two and a half to three cents. And I would be cheap and look for buying it at two and a half cents. Uh, the company is not a very exciting company because it has disappeared from the public view. Uh, but that is where the true opportunities lie in the junior mining sector. Uh, another couple of companies that I like is Precipitate Gold at 18 cents and Thunderstruck Resources at 7.5 cents. So these are the companies I'm paying attention to right now. One more company, which is actually a very favorite company of mine called Irving Resources, ticker is IRV, and it's trading at... 44 cents. Giant, thank you for sharing that. And for all of the listeners, do take note of the symbols and the names. And uh, Giant, before we leave today, talk to us about some speaking engagements that you will be attending here in the near future. Well, I am just about to leave for London. Uh, I'm speaking at Eton College, which is um, a very uh, well-known school in, in the UK. And they have invited me to t talk to them about what I think about India's future and how it compares with China. And then I'm speaking and debating in, at Minds and Money show in London. And that will also be about whether India is the next China. And of course, uh, Maurice, uh, as you can probably imagine, I have a very, very negative view of India. In my view, India is going to disintegrate into smaller com countries um, within a decade, if not, uh, or even in less than a decade. Uh, and India is not China in any way you can imagine. Now, in reference to speaking engagements, uh, we have to talk about capitalism and morality. For a first-time listener, tell us about it. Capitalism and Morality is a philosophical seminar that I run in Vancouver every year. The next seminar will be on the 29th of July, 2017 at, in downtown Vancouver. I have been running this seminar for the last seven or eight years, Maurice, and this is my baby. I love this seminar. I work, I put in a huge amount of time and effort on developing a program, promoting it, bringing in some of the best speakers possible, people like Rick Rool, Doug Casey, Ian Plimmer, a, a, a huge variety of speakers who speak on a variety of subjects. It, it has nothing to do with investing. It's about all about philosophy, but really, Maurice, without philosophy, nothing else works. We should learn philosophy. Giant, I was in attendance this, uh, this year in Vancouver, it was spectacular. It was mind opening. And uh, for anyone that has not had an opportunity to uh, view it on YouTube, just simply type in capitalism and morality. And Giant, before we leave, please share with us the website. So that will be my name in continuation.com, which is giantbhandari.com. Uh, and there's a tab in, on my website called Capitalism and Morality that gives you not only the program of next year's seminar, I actually still have to uh, prepare the web page, but that should, should be there in a few days now. But it also provides you links of all the videos, 
all the recordings of the last seven or eight years of seminars. So you can actually go and watch those free of cost. Jayan Bandari, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you very much for having me, Maurice. All the best to you, sir. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.